Newton's third law is for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. These forces act on different objects. Everything here is very important to remember. What this means is, if there's a force involved in something, there will be another force created. For instance, if I take my hand and push this box, there's a force of my hand on the box. My hand is pushing the box. Then that's called the action. I will get a reaction force, which is a force of the box on my hand. Now the thing that people kind of get confused about is if you've got an action force and an, an equal and opposite reaction force, don't they cancel out? For instance, if I push the book with two newtons to the right and there's a reaction of two newtons to the left, two newtons to the right and two newtons to the left makes you think, okay, there's zero newtons acting on the box, the box is not going to move. But then how could anything move? The thing is you've got to put this line in here. These forces act on different objects. If I push on this box, there's an action force, force of my hand on the book. Therefore, there must be a reaction force, force of the book on my hand. Each force is acting on a different object. Can the box move to the right? Sure. If I look at just the box, there's a force on it, two newtons to the right. What about my hand? The reaction is on my hand. It makes it look like my hand is going to the left. But the thing is, what's happening here is, in order for the, my hand to move to the right to push the box, my arm must be pushing with more force. So if there's a reaction on my hand of two newtons, then my arm must be pushing with five newtons, giving their net force on my hand three newtons to the right. So my hand is also able to move to the right. So when you push on something, an equal and opposite force is created, but they don't cancel each other out. And that's how things move. If I want to know what the book is doing, I look at the forces on the book, there's a force of two newtons on the book, the book can move to the right or accelerate to the right. I look at my hand, there's a force of two newtons to the left on my hand, but I've got force of my arm on my hand to the right, so this is bigger than this, my hand can move to the right. Of course, there would be a reaction. Force of my arm on my hand would mean there's a force of my hand on my arm, and so I could keep going all the way down to where my foot touches the floor and push on the floor. Let's look at another example. Here's a cannon with a cannonball. When the cannon pushes the cannonball out, we have force of the cannon on the ball. That's what pushes the cannonball out this way. I have to draw that while the cannonball is inside the cannon, by the way, because if I drew it out here, it would make a better diagram, but the force on the ball is only there while the, while the ball is inside the cannon. Once the, once the cannonball has left the cannon, there's no force on the ball. Nothing chases after the ball and keeps pushing it. So while it's in the ball, the cannon, while it's in the cannon, the force of the cannon is pushing on the ball, the cannonball will go that way. That means there must be an equal and opposite. The ball must be pushing back on the cannon this way. And you can see that when the cannon ball goes out that way, the cannon gets pushed back this way. Now, what would happen is, if the forces are the same, you'd think then, isn't it just as dangerous to stand behind the cannon as in front of the cannon? The cannonball is not as massive as the cannon. So there's a force on the cannonball, it accelerates the cannonball, and the cannonball goes out that way really quickly. That same force is acting back on the cannon, and because the cannon is so much heavier than the cannonball, its acceleration is a lot less. It's like when you shoot a gun. The bullet's going to leave the gun very quickly, the gun is going to rebound and push back with the same force but its acceleration is less. That force has less an effect on the gun than it does on the bullet. Now, if I had a very light gun, the bullet would go shooting out, and the gun would go shooting back even faster, and that would be dangerous. That's why cannons are really heavy, and that's why guns are really heavy. The third law is also used when you're walking. When you're walking forward, you're not pushing yourself forward. What you're really doing is you've got force of your foot on the ground. When I walk, I push the ground backwards. That creates, that's my action force. That creates a reaction, force of ground on foot. So the action is, I try and push the earth that way, the earth pushes back, and that's the force that makes me move forward. Does that mean the earth moves backward? Yes, it does. But remember, the earth is so massive, like our cannon, if it's more massive, the force has less effect. So when I walk forward, I push the earth backwards, and yes, the earth moves back very, very little. 
and I have a force, the reaction, the ground pushes on my foot, I move forward, if my mass is less, I seem to move forward more than the ground moves backwards. It's the same as when you're swimming. If you're swimming, what do you do with your hand? You're pushing the water backwards. You're making an action force, a force of hand on the water. The reaction, force of water on your hand. As a result, you end up being pushed forward. Um, another example might be a helicopter. If you have a helicopter here, what's the helicopter really doing? The propeller is pushing the air down. Force of the propeller on the air, pushing the air down. The reaction is force of the air on the propeller. That's what pushes the helicopter up. So you've got to remember, equal and opposite, but these forces act on different objects. If both these forces were on the helicopter, the helicopter would not accelerate up or down. 